Are you buying a new or used RV and scared you're going to buy a lemon? In this video, I show you things to look for in buying a new or used RV and walk you through how I do an inspection. Plus, I give you a free downloadable checklist to print off and use on inspection day. Hi, I'm Steve with Raider Road Warriors. I have many years experience with sticks and bricks construction, but when I got into the RV, I realized they were built a lot different. After that, I went through a week-long course with an NRVIA to become a certified level one inspector. What that means is people that buy RVs, they can go through a level one inspector, they can do a full inspection on those RVs to make sure that all the systems are working before they take that RV home so they are comfortable with the RV. Now when I took this course for my own knowledge, I don't do this as a job. If I was to do a pre-delivery inspection or if you were to hire an inspector, they would go through a lot more and have some specialized tools to check every function of the RV. This video is part of a series that covers the RV buying process, inspection, maintenance, and more. You'll find links to those videos in the description down below as well. Now let's get into the inspection. Hold on a second. We were gonna do this video when we bought a new RV, but six months later, the new RV hasn't came. So this inspection is with our current RV. There's a lot of things that we took out of here so you can see the RV, but still a lot of things tucked away in the cabinets and drawers. If you were to buy a new or used RV, you should be able to see all the areas that you want to inspect on it. Now, let's really get into the inspection. Page one of the printable PDF is some notes. You're going to read through that and review it. We're going to start with page two, which is the interior of the RV. So to start off with, we're going to check some of the plugs around. You can bring a small appliance along with you, or you can grab one of these little plug testers. I got it from Walmart for five or ten dollars. So we're going to check some plugs around the RV to make sure they're working properly. So when I plug this in, this will give me some indicator lights. If I have two orange, I'm good. If I have a red, it's bad. You can see a little chart in the front of it. So we're gonna check every plug as we go through the RV. And you're also gonna test the GFIs when you push a button on the front of it. That'll trip the GFI to make sure that system's working properly. And just remember, you need to be hooked up to electricity to make sure all these plugs work on the inside. We're gonna open up all the windows and make sure everything works. Some windows are frameless ones where they push out. This one's an emergency one. And the one next to it just gonna be a crank out one. These will open tough if they sat for a while. There it goes. So it is ready open and then lefty to close it. So if it opens tight the first time, you can open it a second time, make sure nothing's crazy sticky on that. But as they sit in the heat, they do get a little bit sticky and they'll set that way. We're gonna make sure that the sliding windows go up and down and they latch. So we'll bring those back down. And while we're here, we'll check the blinds, make sure they go up and down properly. So they should go up and stay when it's really hot and cold. Sometimes they'll stick a little bit, but that's normal. But they do move and they latch where they should. That's what you're looking for. Open and close all the interior doors. Make sure they open, close properly. The latches hold the door where it's supposed to be. Get down on the floor and look everything over. Look for any rips, tears. Walk through every inch of the floor. Check for any soft spots. So we'll take our hand, we'll look around, especially by the slides areas. That's where things come in and out and really can rip the floors when they're working. A soft spot in the floor would be if you're walking around, you feel it spongy as you're walking, you're gonna have a little bit of give in all these floors, but you don't wanna feel like you're gonna fall through to the ground below you. While you're looking at the flooring, you see any bulges or curling in it. This is kind of normal around the slides where the edges will peel up a little bit. Some RVs will be a little bit more than others. This will just kind of sit there a little bit, especially if a slide just came out. A lot of times this will be bunched up on the island areas. It takes a little minute to flatten out. So you have to use your discretion if that is good or bad, depending on the situation. Looking over all the cabinets and drawers, we're gonna open every drawer, make sure it opens, closes properly. While it's open, we'll look at all the hardware in the sides, make sure nothing is loose, no screws are falling out. On the front of it, we're gonna look at the handles, all these things are tight. You can go through every screw with a screwdriver if you want to, or you can visually go around and look at all the items around it, make sure things are in good shape. As you're going through all the doors and cabinets, don't forget about a sliding wardrobe if you have one of these doors. A lot of times these have a misalignment on them, but they don't open very smooth or they don't latch properly. And also when you're up in this area, a lot of the hardware in front can only have small screws inside of there. They can loosen up really easily. So check inside of all those cabinets and wardrobe areas also. To do an inspection, you have to get into every inch of the RV. Trim is gonna be something you're gonna find a lot of little pieces that are loose like this. It's a simple to nail back up. So check around all the areas, make sure things are tight because you might be frustrated when you get to your first stop and things are falling off the ceiling. Now we'll go into the furniture area. So we'll start with the mattress. You wanna pick it up, look at the mattress underneath, check for any mold, any rips or tears in the mattresses. If you're buying a new RV 
it should be a new mattress inside of a bag. Look through the furniture and all the stitching, check for any rips or tears in material. Sometimes you can have some loose things, especially around the bottom. Just a string hanging out, no big deal. But if it's gonna fall apart, it is a big deal. Make sure everything functions on these things. Take the recliner, pull it out. Everything leans back. Oh, sorry, Diesel. <laughs> Lost the cat. Make sure everything closes properly and it doesn't drag on the floor. When you're checking your dining room table and chairs, you're making sure everything is screwed in properly, everything functions properly. If your table has a sliding leaf that pulls out or one that folds out, make sure that works properly as it should. Believe it or not, I've seen some RVs where these tables are installed backwards, where the leaf is towards the window where you can't use it. People don't realize that until they get home. Just a matter of unscrewing the table and putting it back in. It is one of the things you want to check. Every table should have some dining room chairs of some sort. I already said four that came with it. Not these ones. These are a cat scratching post. We have the chairs that came with it up in storage. We'll put those back in it when we go to sell the RV eventually. When you're checking out your sofa beds, fold them out all the way and make sure they are flat. We had one that had legs that were too long. It didn't sit flat. We had to take care of that in a warranty mm -hmm. issue. We've also noticed with this couch in particular, when we travel, a lot of the screws pull out of the flooring and they come loose. So you want to check these things, make sure it's screwed in properly, and then fold everything out. You can look at the screws underneath when you're folding it out also. What I normally see is people buy an RV, they're so excited during the process, it's so overwhelming between the finances, a new RV, it's shiny, it's great. They don't check many things on it when they get home or they take their first camping trip and they realize that there's issues here or there, little things, and it drives them crazy because they have to fix those after the fact, whether it's himself or take back to the dealership. That's why this inspection is so important to do before you take it off of the dealer's lot. Now looking at the appliances, we'll start off with a smoke and CO2 detectors. You can check them by pushing a button on it. If you push the button and it doesn't work, you might want to take it, open it up, make sure that the plastic tab is out of the battery. The same thing in the CO2 detectors. There's a button on those. You can check that. I'm not going to push these buttons because they're going to beep and really blow out speakers on this video. Looking at the microwave, you want to make sure everything opens properly in the door, it closes, it works, it's fastened properly. If you have a coffee cup, you can put some water in it, heat it up, make sure everything functions properly in the microwave. Looking at the stove, open everything up so you can access the burners. Check the burners, make sure everything works in the stove also. Run each burner for just a little bit to make sure you have everything working. Turn them off. Make sure you know how the oven works. Sometimes the igniter lights the oven. The other times you have to have a physical lighter to light the pilot light in the oven, and then you can turn it on from there. Look at the outside of the fridge. Make sure the doors are aligned properly. Everything looks like it's square where it should be. You can do a dollar bill test. You take this, you open one of the doors, you put it behind the seal. If it has a little bit of tension on it, it's good. If it's really loose or really tight, you might need some adjustment on one of those seals for that part. When you're checking the functions of the fridge, ours is a gas and or electric fridge. So we'll push the buttons on the front, make sure it works when it's on electric only, on gas only, or on auto mode. You can go through the cold settings to make sure everything functions on the front. You should hear it running and know that it's working from there. Go around all of your TVs, make sure it's secured properly. These are usually on mounts and the mounts could be installed crooked or barely holding on. And turn the thing on, make sure it works. Know where the antenna booster is. The dealership might have to help you to know where those things are inside the RV. Most RVs come with a CD or DVD player. If you're gonna use the functions on that, you can bring a CD or DVD to make sure that part works on it. A lot of times I have a Bluetooth on those as well. Make sure it links up to your phone so you can see if you want to use all those functions that it works or you know how it works and the dealership might be able to help you figure that part out. Now we're on the HVAC, which is your heating and cooling systems. Ours has an air conditioner in the front and the back. We'll check both of them the same way. We'll go through this thermostat, turn it on to cool, make sure things start blowing cold out of the AC unit. When you're going around checking the AC, listen for any extra noise comes out of the air conditioners. Some are gonna be noisy in general, but anything rattling or loose is what you're listening for. After you check your air conditioning, we're gonna check the furnace. Some of these things are gonna be difficult in the hot or cold months of the year. So you might have to turn this thermostat all the way up until it's gonna be warmer than your actual temperature on the inside to make sure it kicks on. You can't hear that it's running in the video, but we'll check the vents, make sure it feels some warm air blowing out of all the registers for the furnace. Once you've verified the air conditioners and the furnaces work, you've gone through all the functions on the thermostat, so you'll know everything is good in that department. Next on the list is plumbing. If you're getting some value out of this video, please give it a like so other people can find it as well. 
To check that you have hot water in the RV, you need to check the hot water heater. Sometimes you have an electric function, sometimes a gas function, sometimes you have both. So we're going to turn the electric on first. It'll take around 10 minutes for the water to start heating up on that. So we'll let that go for a little bit, then we'll check some of the faucets, see if there's hot water coming out of them. And then we'll know the electric element works. We turn off the electric part, then turn on the gas part, to make sure that the gas kicks on. You should hear that kick on from the inside of the RV and the water should get hotter as a gas function is running. I have seen in some RVs that these switches are backwards, so the gas might run electric and the electric runs gas, vice versa. That's why it's important to do one at a time. You might not be able to check all of the water functions at the dealership if there's no water hook up to it. You definitely don't want to turn the hot water heater on without any water inside of it. So if you have water hooked up and hot water heater is heating, we're going to check all the functions of your faucets. Starting in the kitchen, we'll turn the hot on, let it run for a little bit, make sure hot water comes out, and do the same thing with the cold side. And you're going to check underneath of the sinks for any leaks. You've ran some water through it, so if there's any leaks on the drains, you'll be able to see that. I also go around at that time, make sure all the lines are tight and the water coming in, and the drain water is going out. If you have a washer and dryer, you want to check those connections, make sure they're leak free and tight as well. In the shower area, look at all the silicone around the top and around the door area. You want to make sure nothing is missing and no gaps are in there, any screws are loose. When you're going down the track all the way to the bottom, some of these don't have doors like this one does, but there's a couple holes that are in the track that drains the water back into the shower. I've seen pictures of people who had these installed the wrong way where the water is draining out to the bathroom floor. That is something you definitely want to get fixed before you take the first shower in the RV. RVs have two systems on them. They have the plugs you plug things into and all the lights. The lights are your DC system. We'll make sure all of those functions work on them. So take all your switches, turn them on and off. You have a dimmer switch, make sure those things function properly. Any fans work. So go around all the switches in the RV. Also make sure you check the switches that control the outside lights on the RV. Keep in mind, this inspection is not an end-all be-all. If there's things you're not comfortable with, that's not a problem. Either way, watching this video, you'll gain knowledge on things that need to be inspected on the RV, whether you're doing it yourself or you're having someone to do it for you. Now let's get into the outside inspection. We'll start with underneath the RV, looking at the belly wrap underneath. That's a black plastic that covers everything up. We're checking to make sure nothing is majorly hanging down. That'll never be perfectly flat, but it should be sealing everything up so no water, moisture, or rodents can get inside the RV. While you're down there, look at the frame. Check for any premature rust, any cracks in the frames along the welds, especially the suspension area. Some of those areas get beat up the most, and that's where you can have more issues than the rest of the RV. When we're checking over the wheels and tires, we're looking on the outsides of these tires, make sure there's no major scrapes or gouges. If someone ran into a curb, checking the aluminum rim itself, there's no cracks on that part. We're gonna check the air pressure in the tire, verify the air pressure matches up to the number on the side of the tire or the sticker on the side of the RV. We're gonna check the torque and the lug nuts. If you don't have a torque wrench like one of these guys, the dealership should have one of those for you to verify the wheels are torqued properly. We're gonna look at the side of the tire for the date code to make sure the tires aren't too old or they're risk of blowing out. If you wanna learn how to read date codes and tires, we'll link the video up here for you. We'll also put it in the description down below. The last thing around these tires, we'll check all the nuts and bolts of the suspension to make sure nothing looks like it's loose or it's missing. And when you go towards the back of the RV where the spare tire should be, Make sure they has one up there that is secure and not going to fall off driving down the road. Check all the windows, doors, and locks on the outside. Make sure the key works in all the locks you have. Check the operation of them. Look at the seals around them. Check the hinges. Nothing is loose. Everything is going to seal tight. Keep the water out. Then we'll come over to the main door. Open and close the main door. See if it shuts. You have to slam it to shut it. You do. That's not good. You might need a little bit of lube in that latch or the hinges to make it open smoothly. When we're working on the main door, we'll check the screen door and the main door both, and we'll verify the steps go up and they latch, and the door closes with the steps in for transfer position. As you're going around all of your doors on the outside, check your caulking. Make sure everything is smooth, no gaps in there, no way for water to get in behind and into the RV. Next on our checklist is the exterior structure. We're going to walk around the whole RV when you're checking this, looking for one item at a time. The first thing you want to look at if your fiberglass is smooth, no delamination, which is bulges or bubbles in the RV. That means water is behind and you have water damage somewhere. If you're looking at your fiberglass, look around the slides, especially you can have some cracks or issues in those areas from the slides going in and out. Check your front cap, 
your rear cap area for any damage, any cracks. You're looking for anything that looks out of the ordinary or damaged when you're walking around the outside. On the bottom of the RV is going to be some trim and panels and wheel skirts. These usually are screwed in, so check make sure these aren't going to flop off as you're traveling. You can check the screws on them and tighten it up if it's that simple. In general, on the outside, you want to check all the moldings, make sure the caulking is smooth around it, all the screws are tight. Trying to look for any ways that the RV could fall apart or water to get into. You check the awning for its operation. It goes all the way out, all the way back in. When it's out, you'll be able to see the screws where it's screwed into. Make sure everything is tight and sealed up at that point. You want to make sure the ladder is tight, all the screws are in place, nothing is loose, and it's going to hold you going up the RV. If you're not comfortable climbing ladders, I don't suggest this for you. After we do the ladder, we'll go up on the roof. We're going to check all the roofing material. Everything is smooth, no screws are poking up. Look at all of the caulking on the roof, around all the vents, all the seals, especially the front and rear corners. Those areas are your number one areas that start to separate because the air reflexes as it drives down the road. You need to check all the lights, the blinkers, the brake lights, and the clearance lights. If you're not hooked up to a vehicle, you can check that when you're hooked up before you pull out of the lot. When we're looking at the slides, we're going to start with the seals. Make sure they're intact and everything is going to hold water out of the RV. On the sides, the top, and the bottom. When you're underneath the bottom, we'll check all the brackets down there. There's usually some hoses or wires that go back and forth. Make sure everything is secure in that area. We're going to start moving the slides in and out. We'll make sure the seals or flaps in the slides are not catching when it goes in and out. We'll run them through their operation all the way in, all the way out. Make sure everything sounds good. There's no issues with those. When the slides are all the way in, we'll look around the outsides of them, make sure there's no big gaps in them. We're looking to make sure everything goes in all the way and it's even. When we're going around all of those slides, we'll also be looking at the trim and the screws to verify everything is secure and intact. Looking at the propane tanks, we want to make sure everything is secure in all the tanks and the brackets. So this has a tray that pulls out and it tightens down on the top. Make sure everything seems like it's secure. If you can tighten them more, you can do that. We're going to smell for leaks around these areas and check the date code on the tanks and verifying there's no corrosion or rust in these tanks. Looking at all the hitching and leveling system, we're going to pull out our power cord that hooks into the truck and verify the seven-way pigtail is secure. Look for any rust or issues inside of this plug. Depending on the type of landing gear or leveling system that you have, every other one's going to work differently. If you're buying it from a dealer, they can show you how that works, or the person you're buying it from will help you with that as well. You want to make sure everything works and functions as it should. If it has auto level, make sure the system works, and once it's done, the RV is actually level. When we bought this RV, our leveling system was not working from the factory. Our dealer caught it in the PDI, but it had a couple day delay for us to pick the RV up for them to get the parts and fix it. When we're looking at the plumbing and electrical systems on the outside, we'll start with the sewer area. Every tank has a dump valve on it. You want to know where all those dump valves are. Make sure they're labeled properly so you know what valve operates what tank. If you'll pull those valves in and out, make sure everything functions properly so the tanks are going to dump when you want it to. If you have water hooked up to the RV, you can run a black tank flush to it and verify all those systems are working and the water flows out to the sewer. Looking at the AC power cord on the outside of the RV, where it plugs into the RV and where it would plug into the campground power, we'll look at all those connections, make sure nothing looks like it's melted, black, corroded, any issues inside there. But verify the power is off first before you do this. I know we covered a lot of information in a short amount of time in this video. You can save it to your playlist on YouTube so you can refer back to it. Watch it as many times as you want to. You can have it ready to go when you're doing RV inspection. Also make sure you save a downloadable checklist in the description down below. Have it handy in your computer when you're ready to do an inspection. If you haven't already watched How to Buy the Perfect RV the first time around, I'll link that down in the description. You want to watch that one next. I'll also put our new to RVing playlist down there as well. There's a lot of great information in those videos and playlists. You definitely want to check those out. Happy RV shopping and we'll see you in the next video.